Hello everybody, welcome to Tuesday Lunchtimes Live. I don't know how many are in, someone's just whispered in my ear that looks like there's 20. So welcome to you guys. Thank you for uh, finding time to come over and uh, listen to what rabbit. So I'm going to pull out the hat today and bits and pieces like that. Uh, hoping everyone's well. I have two earworms today, a brace of earworms. Let me just bring them back onto the screen quickly so that you can uh, see who they are. Mark the gentleman. How do. And Brian. The, Good uh, afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Hi, so, Mark. Uh, I'll dump these in the background again. A good I've list for us. <laughs> yeah, I've got to work from one end of the workshop to the other because the uh, mouse doesn't want to pick up. So I've still got to go back there because I've got to change the bloody camera. It's a trouble with getting old, you guys. So let's put a camera on so you can see what I'm uh, going to turn. So which one do I want? I think I want that one. You're not old, Keith. You're a survivor. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny, Mark. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... What you can see is a lump of, I believe it's larch. And do you want it in English, French, or Irish? In Irish, Irish, it's, in Irish it's, a, it's, a, it's a brick and a third by a cement course. Or 12 inches by 3 inches. Or 300 by 80 mil. So you've got your choice there, guys. Hopefully I've uh, totally baffled you. Right, I'm going to put some glasses on. Just about see out of them. Turn on the extractor. Which... Right, I'm going to read out some names then for you while you do that. Yep, no problem. I'm just going to start to get this into round and uh, see if we can get a bit of shape onto it. Right, got... Uh... Clive Rogerson, Douglas Mungham, Duncan the Demon Barber, Gav Today Woodwork, Gerard the Prince Turner, Hodgepodge Woodwork, Jennifer Thornton, Lawrence Bedeja, Mark Pitchard, Mike the Midnight Joker, Paul Kavanagh, Richard RJK Spinningwood, Robert Dolman, Steve Scott, Terry from TJ Turning, Tommy's Workshop, Wifey Woodshed, Wood Wizardry by Colin, and we've also got Steve Scott, um, I saw Alan from your club. I can't remember his last name. Wallington? Or... Alan Wallington, yeah. Uh, uh, please, it could be two in. I think that's about it. That's all that was on the list. Karen Dolman's in. Hi, Karen. Hi, guys. Thank you for Alan popping Wesley. over. Alan Wesley's in. Alan Wesley, right. He's a club member. Walking Owls. Thirty-two in. Oh well, crept up quick. So good afternoon, everybody in the chat for me as well. Um, Mark did a great job of reading the reading the list out. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's basically just reading. <laughs> it's not rocket science. <laughs> yeah, it's the way you do it, Michael. Oh, no, 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 okay. <laughs> Terry Hooper's in. Hi, Terry. Some bits flying off here. Yeah, don't to worry. Nothing major. Honey wood. Four, four King Earls just made a comment. Wow, that's a huge cut. Yeah, there was a size cut going off there. It's only a softest wood. I believe it's large. So, with a 
with a sharp tool, you can take a larger cut. Oh, bloody hell. I've got one and a half horses driving it, so I've got a little bit of grunt to it. So I'm not too concerned. Welcome, Dr. Susan. John S. Susan. How are you, John? Mostly watching. Forget anybody if you've got a question for Keith, drop it in the chat. If you could preface it with a couple of question marks or the word question, so that Brian and I can spot it out. We'll do our best to answer it for you. Clive, Clive Rogerson says about. that dust collector could do with a sharpen. Best quality plastic. Barry's Wood Creations is in. Hi, Barry. Nearly at a position where I can get a, a reasonable cut now. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. I know some people didn't enjoy it, but uh, quite a laugh. Sorry, I missed that, Mark. It was just us just meant commenting about my life last night. That's all. all right. He said, watch the replay. It was a really good laugh. So I enjoyed it. Some people didn't. I still got to watch that. Happy with that shape. It's well torn out, which is typical of larch. But there's some quite nice grain in there. It's a bit bleached out, but you can see that's Thanks, Gav. Thanks, Douglas. That's torn out. Doug that's Miller. Torn out. Hello, Doug. Welcome, Doug. Thank you, Jennifer. A freshly sharpened chisel. Let's see if I can get one cut on that. Try that one. They're a, to be honest, they're a dead simple little project. So it, I, I probably made it look a lot harder than it is because I'm cack handed. But it's basically a goblet with a stem without a foot, and you just cut a chunk off. And you've got a scoop. Happy days. So I've, I've mounted this lump normal way for me on a faceplate ring on Axminster's sea jaws as it's a, a bigger lump of wood. So that will give me the opportunity to take it off a bit later on and remount it. Someone's asked me a question, Keith. Joe is French turner, but you could probably answer as well. If you did not have a bandsaw, 
how would you go about cutting the chunk off to make the scoop? You could use a handsaw. Yep. Like one of those Japanese pull saws or a tenon saw, uh, coping saw, red saw. You could, you could cut it off with any saw. Yeah. It's just a bit more difficult, that's all. Yeah. You could still achieve the same result. A bit of sanding afterwards. And if you didn't have a power sander uh, or a sanding disc, you could sand it by hand. Yeah. Douglas, would they sell? That. Would they sell well? Yes, they do. They do sell well. About a tenner, about ten pounds each for those. Depending where your market is, so you should get ten. You're being very quiet, Dicky. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't want a mouthful of uh, shavings at the moment. <laughs> and I think everyone knows basically how to turn a bowl, which is why I'm to bothered to get too vocal. So normal procedure for marking out a mortise, left hand leg of the dividers so I've got three three rings on there because I didn't hit it right the first time I'm going to there bring up the tool rest I've dug out my homemade one because I can get right the way across in one swoop the manufacturer's one's got a bloody great knuckle on there so you can't go right through with the with your chisel you get to there and you've got to start again there it's a bit of a funny design but uh, as they're no longer with us and made it's not a problem to me so, a bit of 30 mil stainless steel bar a word in my mate's ear a little bit to drink and he was uh, quite happy to do what I wanted so I'm gonna go a fraction deeper than what I would normally I'm just gonna turn a heater off Keeps too warm. Yes. I'm freezing yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, not so very warm over here. It was 11 when I come out just now. Right. Bring the tool rest up to centre or just above. Here in the shed's in, he's asking... What is a French curve? The French curve is a curve that uh, doesn't stop when it gets to a circle or an oval or anything like that. It's a continuous um, graduated curve. It can be, be tight. You, you go on Amazon and type in French curve. It's like a plastic template that you use to trace around architects use them or used to use them when they had to draw things by hand you don't now because it's all on CAD but you can on on CAD if you pull in some um, marker points you can then set up a, a French curve between them You can buy a, a real simple set of French curve um, rulers, they call them, um, yep. of Amazon for about a five or now. And it gives you, there's a whole set, set of circles, set of curves, and they're about five pounds each. Yeah, they're not expensive and for what they are. Right. 
see if that will stop there. Right. Drill his uh, cousin out. See if this will suck some of that away. Got to start on 80 because there's a bit of tear out. There you go, everybody. There's a link for a French curve on Amazon. Five ninety nine. Didn't like that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um. Hi, Clive Hutchison got a question. What is the recess depth for a piece that size? Well, I've gone to um, almost the full depth of the jaws. That is five mil in there. I wouldn't want anything less because there's quite a lot of weight on this bit flying flying around quite fast. So Wood Wizardry remembers uh, a French from technical drawing at school. That would be right, that's where I remember it from. Brian, your mic is breaking up a little bit, mate. Oh, is it? Yeah. Let me just check that. Sounds like you're just a little bit out of distance for the uh, dongle. Hmm. I shouldn't be for, because I'm about four feet from the dongle. Okay. There, I'm just speaking English, then, Brian. I'll treat that remark with a contempt it deserves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of talk in the chat about painting French girls. Isn't that? I don't know. I don't know what they. I don't know what they mean because I'm young and innocent. It's keeping them quiet, keeping them amused and happy. Let them do it. Yeah, yeah. That's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Barry's in from Real Simple oh. Things. Oh, oh guys, be careful. Don't disappear, mate. You've got something to look, look forward to in a little while. Ooh. Although, Barry, he could just be teasing you like I did. <laughs> no, I'm... Uh... Let's kill that. Alan Wesley would like to know, is that an angle grinder with a chuck on the front? Yes. No, it's not an angle grinder. It's an angle drill. Which one are we on? It's a high tashy and it's 15 odd years old. I've just taken the Jacobs chuck off and put on a uh, single one-handed one. But it's uh, it's a lot easier because you can... You can hold it in one hand and you're right up by the um, cutting bit. Whereas if you put a drill on, you're a, a handle away. So I find for me on this sort of thing, it works a treat. So, right. Now this isn't finished. This is just coming off for part two. So, if I change cameras. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe Barry's just called me a horrible old man. Barry, <laughs> I'm, I've, I've, I'm, I'm speechless. I am not old. <laughs> I'm the old one. 
Ah, what have we got here? Picture That's not the speak. workshop. That's not the workshop. I'll see you outside. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. If not, I okay, mate. If not. Leave it with you. Oh. Cheers. Buzz, that looks like a probe tank. Something different, and I don't use he's flying ex, in. He's in an the ex plumber, so he's bound to have proper Bernie Bernie. Here you go, Baz. Look at that. Can you see me? Dana? Yeah, we can see you, we can hear you. Right. That's good, yeah. Because I haven't got any monitors out here. Just give it a little bit more volume. No, I don't want to. I don't want flames licking off of this. I just want <laughs> want it to look. Oh, but I think it's been charred. Bad, but... Yeah, like it's been charred. It's cracking well. It's a bone dry piece. Looks like a herd of zebras uh, laying down in the sun. Well, that's what I'm saying anyway. You used map gas, didn't you, uh, Mark, on yours? Butane. Butane, yeah, which is slightly hotter than uh, propane, I believe. But, uh, I could put the big burner on, but uh, my arm's underneath of it, so I thought I better not. I'll let you all into a secret. The only reason I didn't burn the stem on the uh, scoop I made last night, because as you probably all realised, I, no, I screwed the stem up completely. I, I left myself too short. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of glossed over that as quickly as I could. <laughs> Never know it's Mark at all. Never know. Lewis, the Klondike craftsman is in. Hello, Lewis. Hi, Lewis. All right. There's one or two. Little cracks opened up in there. 52 watchings. Cool. That's good. Welcome, guys. Thank you for uh, stopping. And uh, we'll have a lunchtime laugh. Uh, this is really for Barry. Mr. Baz. Mr. Frog. The French one. That can stop there. Gerard says, Gerard the French turner says, no, Mark, it was a design. Change in the design. No, no, really wasn't. <laughs> it, was a, it was a complete screw up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only meant to go 55 mil deep and I went 75 and then I left myself short on the stem. Uh -huh. I, if I make a mistake, I'll own up to it. All right, so... Let me put this back on and I'll bring the right camera back on. All right. Wifey says, we noticed, Mark, but we're too polite to say anything. Please don't be polite. If you guys notice I make a mistake, shout it out. Because it might be that I've not noticed. All right. I'm all up for transparency. I think, I think everything about last night proved that. <laughs> I've yet to watch that, so... Right, what do you reckon, guys? Not too heavily burnt or scorched. That's, nice. That's um, the kind just, of burning I like. Subtle. Yeah, subtle. So I'm just going to hit it with Lawrence some... Lawrence has got a question. 240. 
He says, yesterday someone said that you can use CA glue with ground coffee. Yep. Is this coffee from fresh coffee or something else? Yeah, it's fresh coffee grounds. You can use... use um, you can't use... use straight out of, of... No, you, you can use um, used coffee grounds from your cafeteria. cafetiere. It works. Just need to dry them. That's better. If uh, if you want something else, if you've got if you've got one of the old fashioned coffee grinders, and you don't use it to grind coffee now, I can't see. These bloody glasses are clogged up. You bark dust. Take the bark off you, put it in your coffee grinder, mince it up, save it. Wood and wood. Works a treat. Mark Stroughton's in. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mark. I do hope room service has provided you with uh, coffee and toast. They're a bit slow bringing it out for me. All right. It's just going to... Knock this back with a bit of, don't want 400. It's a bit, uh, a bit ambitious, a bit of 120. Followed by a bit of 240. 120, a bit of 240. And cue the U jokes. You guys. Right. So I'm going to finish that with, at a later date, hard wax oil. Brush that on quite liberally. Leave it for 20 minutes. Brush filling it gaps. Off. Baz, for filling gaps. Gaps or cracks? Yeah. Was that my bark? Yes. Yeah. Bad said he puts the bark dust before he missed something. Yeah, well, he was asleep, wasn't he? Froggies are always the same. They always take a siesta at lunchtime. Mark Stroughton says, coffee but no toast. Going oh. to have to find a better hotel. See, now, Mark, <laughs> I, I would suggest complaining to the management, but I have a suspicion I'd that the management... Well <laughs> the, the management and the room service are both one and the same person. All right, what I'm doing now is I've got that on the chuck. I've got it just so that it's gripping. As it's a furry old wood, I'm just using the corners of the jaws, tightening them up slowly, turning it round, using the jaws as a cutter so that I know I'm well and truly on there so start it up slow and that's just about spot on <laughs> guys guys in the chat you need better you jokes these are terrible and it's not you it's large <laughs> I think they were talking about the U bark. Yeah. They talk about anything, don't they? Keith, uh, Forking House says, Keith, U bark is worse than U bite. For an half an hour. Yeah. yeah. Worse. Right. I'm just going <laughs> to. Trim up oh, the edge. Poor, poor Mark Stratton just got swore out from downstairs. Yeah. You're lucky that it was only swore. Then the reason why faceplates are so expensive, the Axminster C-Ring is precision engineered. 
and it'll be precision engineered down to a very high tolerance so it sits on the C-rings properly. A threaded 75 mil faceplate is probably just cast and won't be as precision engineered. And if I do get a major catch, because just there, you can see a branch coming out, which is why it didn't want to cut very well from the outside. But if I should get a major catch there or anywhere and it throw it off the lathe, I can still remount it on the original mountain. So that's why I do it. Barry Fitch is Barry. in. Hello, Barry. Hello, Barry, club member. 56 in, mate. Oh, that's good. Thank you, guys. I hope all of you have subscribed to my channel. If not, would you please? Right, mouthful of lubrication, and it's only water. Christina, Michael, hi there. Right, while I'm just breathing some fresh air, I have a small announcement that I've been asked to make to you all. Sounds ominous. Well, not really. Um, it's from Scott, the blue light turner. Most of you realize that he's taken himself off YouTube for a little while. It is totally because of his PTSD and one or two things that have been mentioned within the chat groups of various times. The biggest issues had isn't the chat groups, it's the three deaths that he's had to poke up with in the fairly short or fairly quick time schedule. There's not many of us that would want to uh, cradle a three month old baby in their arms having a heart attack and lose it. There's also a murdered woman somewhere he went to. I don't know any more about it than that. And the um, New Zealand police man, I meant to look up his name before I come down here, that was shot, was a good friend of his as well. And it's all just hit home. And what with other things going on as well, um, he just decided to pull the plug on YouTube for the time being. He will be back in, possibly as quick as a month, but he will be coming back in as the Blue, Blue Light Turner's workshop, which will then give him chance to do some scroll saw work which he's getting into, as well as the turning that he's uh, into. So it's going to be a completely different channel. Um, he's starting from scratch. So he asked me if I would mention that. He won't be in this Thursday or next Thursday because he's working both of those anyway. He's gone back to work today see how it goes he's also taken started monday which was yesterday therapy he had his second session yesterday and he felt a lot better last night so um, please excuse him i've done my bit by passing on the message um 
hopefully we'll see him in here before too long. Right, back to turn. I've popped the link for his channel into the chat. Right, is that the new one? Yeah. Would, yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm covering his two Thursday slots for him so that uh, they don't get taken or don't lose. When he comes back, as he's on, as he does shift work, what we're going to do is work it out that uh, he'll either do Tuesday lunchtime or a Thursday evening, whichever's more convenient to him. I can do either because I've retired. I've just got to remember that it's in the uh, in the diary. Thanks, Pete. Will do, mate. He might even be in the background watching this. Um, he would have come into the chat today and explained it himself, but he's, he's getting ready to go on shift. And, uh, so I doubt whether we'll see him, but uh, he did say he would uh, he would possibly catch on it later on. So now, as I've got that branch right on the edge, which didn't want to cut very well, I've got to, well, I'm going to just radius the edge a bit. Now, I'm not going to use any pull cuts on this, because as soon as you start trying a pull cut on this, it's such a coarse wood. Yeah, I've still got a little... Little nick there, you can't see it on that camera, I don't think. Anyway, there's still a little bit there, so I'm just going to radius that over to save losing any of the diameter. So all of these will be cut, not scraped. The red one for off, don't forget that. Not the green one. <laughs> You're still there, Brian? Yes, I'm still here. I was just, look, I was just I was busy looking up this new channel there, so I've just subbed it up. <laughs> right, then let's get some, get some shape into that. Go for a slightly bigger chisel to start with. Muller it out a bit. Sharp one might be a good idea. Mike Hughes in, no minister. Hi, Mike. Right, I'm looking for about 10, 12 mil there, which is basically what I've left. Hello, Mike. So, so I hope you would borrow from now, mister. I'm not looking for a finished profile. Not yet. Because I did say that we were going to put two woods on this. Let's just clean that up a fraction. That's more than good enough. So to get this wall, I've got left eye over the back. Let's change camera. It might be better. Come on, you bugger. Above tail, nice. Three, one, two, three. No, it's not that one. Must be that one then. No, that's outside. Take care, Colin. Hope everything's all right, mate. Uh, can't see any ma any more. We're better on better on the tail stop one. You can see more what I'm doing. Right. Okay. So what I was what I was trying to explain is my left eye goes down the outside as I'm standing here, my right eye can look on the inside, so I can follow the profile around by basically my nose is looking at this edge. 
So you, you can trace the chisel round. It does work. Takes a bit of uh, thinking about, but it works. So Ian shared so to go back to work. See you all soon. Okay, thanks Ian for stopping by. Daniel Dubois in. Hello, Tonash. Hello, Daniel. These little oysters that I've cut out of you, I'm going to make a make a trench, stick them in, fill the gaps between them with milliput once the glue has gone off and dried and then next week we'll be coming back and we'll uh, finish it off. So I know they're I know they're that wide. So I'm going to score a pair of rings there. One there, and one there, just over the inch apart. With, with my fat part in chisel, I'm just going to go in there. And I've just left the pencil mark. I'm in there five mil. And I'm in there five mil. Now, rather than trying to struggle that out with a gouge, you can do. And the last bit is definitely going to need to come out with something else. So. I've got a, a 3 8 parting tool scraper. Now, I'm not worried what the trench looks like. How smooth it is. My main concern is that it's wide enough, which it is, to take the disc. So I'll take this off as lathe in a minute and show you. I'm just going to go a fraction deeper because I can. Those oysters are about eight mil thick. Right. Turn the, turn the noise machine off so I can hear. I cut them off of this. One cut to start with at about 45 ish degrees. Set the fence up on the bandsaw at whatever depth you want and i've given myself eight mil so carefully push it through against the fence and take your oysters off so they've all come off at the end of this what i was looking for was a piece of wood with color contrast you can you can see it better there so i've got the heart of this little branch of you with the white sapwood and it's actually got bark on whether i can keep the bark on it or i lose that is another thing but i'm not too concerned either way ben so ben, has a question oh go on brian go on okay ben has a question for you keith um do you ever get bored and reorganize your wood collection yeah usually when scott comes around <laughs> Uh, he says it, it, he does sometimes, but it doesn't take long because he hasn't got that much. Uh, 
You're still very um, echoey, Brian. Oh, I don't know why. So I'm just going to lay these in. How are we doing on time, guys? 45 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Plondike's uh, asking, will Milliput stick to the bark well? We'll find out. We'll find out. The bark is certainly stuck. Can you just angle the camera down a bit? Other camera. It's not that one, is it? Here you go. Perfect, perfect. So, yeah, I don't know on that one. I just need to make sure I've got enough oysters to fill it in. I don't see why it shouldn't stick. The bark is well and truly stuck. It's a tightish one. Terry Hooper's in. Hi, Terry. Hello, Terry. Another club member. 61 watching now. Yeah. They're all trying to catch me out. Right, I'm going to need to cut a few <laughs> more. A few more uh, oysters. But... That is basically what it's going to look like. I don't believe that. I'm too short. Two oysters short. So I want to make sure the oysters fit first before I attempt to glue them in. I'm going to be gluing them in with stick saw. Never used it before. Mike Hughes asked a, a good question. It's something I was thinking about as well. Why are they called oysters? It goes back to the old boys that used to do cabinet work, um, veneer work, um, ven marquetry inlay and things like that. They used to, They used to try to get all the grain that they could and they were always referred to as oysters in that trade, apparently. Before my time. So I honestly can't comment on that. But apparently they were always called oysters because they look, with the grain, it looks like it. So I just carried on with what, I've, uh, what I was told. I won't be doing any more today, guys, because I've got to literally clear the bandsaw. You can't see it from that camera, but it's uh, I've got all my spare chisels on there. I've got Terry, spare wood on there. Bits Terry Hooper things. says, Keith, how about showing ring turning of cars and animals? That's that uh, German wood turning technique, isn't it? Oh, I know what you mean, Terry, yeah. You you draw out the profiles, Terry, for me, and uh, I'll see what I can do. Or you come on and do it. Come over here and do it. That's, that's going to scare him off. Because <laughs> the shape resembles an oyster shell, Wikipedia. Oh, so to, Daniel's checked it up on Wikipedia then. I tell you, um, Terry, I tell you who would be good at that and who's done it is um, Little Tom. Our, uh, well, he's now 20, 22, 23. And he did one and brought it over to the club and cut it out. It's, it's like making a bowl without the center and you just cut it into 10, 15, 12 mil sections. And when they're cut, if you look at the, look at the cut piece, it's got the shape of an animal on it. Sheep, deer, cow, giraffe, 
elephant, um, whatever you fancy doing. Um, not the most simple thing to do because you've got to be able to see through the wood as to when you cut it, what the end profile will look like. Mark Pritchard's jumped. He's off the sound of it. He's got to go back to work, I think. Yeah. yeah. Peter Kelly's in. Hello, Pete. Another club member. Yeah. So done quite well with club members today. You had 62 in. Oh, well. So you've all got to come back next Tuesday to uh, for part two. Hi, Keith. Paul you? Smith is in. Oh. For being late. You're in the corner at the moment, Paul, are you? For being late. You're joining Peter in the corner. So my chat's quite a lot slower than yours because I'm on StreamYard and you're all on uh, YouTube, aren't you? So if you've got any questions, guys, ping them up now. Although I've got nowhere to go, I'm not going anywhere, so <coughs> I can stand here for a fair time. I only just discovered you were on today. Sorry. Oh, Andy, for God's sake, mate. Get your act together. You know I'm on Tuesdays. I'm on next Tuesday as well, and I'm also on Thursday, just in case you want to forget that one as well, Thursday evening. Yes, it puts, puts you out so many things, but I'd buy, but forget about it. It's bad enough. We have to get stuff from England, and uh, with Brexit, we are also killed. Uh, good job, Jared. One near first thing, and we were taking the mickey out of Baz. Is he gone yeah. or is he still about? Pass, come back to work, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Right, well, I've got to go because I've got to give a lesson. Okay, mate. Um, Thanks for popping in, Mark. That's all right. Mind, Mark. Talk to you later. See you later, everybody. Take care. Yeah. Stay safe. Cheers, Mark. So, it's all the Thursday one posted, but nothing for today. You didn't look in the right place, Andy, because they they're both on there. I've got three up no, at the well, moment. Well, to be fair, the one for today didn't appear till about uh, half an hour before he started. Really? Yep. Oh, bloody hell. All right, that's when I got the notification, and I actually looked earlier, much earlier, about yeah. 11 o'clock today, and it wasn't there. Barry um, Fitch is off, another club member off. Thanks, Barry. Cheers, mate. hope the pens are working well that you're doing. I know he was going to try and... Uh, Possibly cast his own blanks. Are you going to use epoxy to set the... No, Steve. I'm using Stixel glue to set them. And I'm using Milliput to fill the gaps. Jared, the French tunneler, is having to go. He's off. Thanks, Jared. Uh, You'll I see us next week. Yeah, I did did vaguely say you, you'd um, looked up Durrance OCA or OCD Chuck, the offset turning Chuck. I don't know whether you've had any more luck than I've had, but uh, I couldn't find the one that I've got, but I've found reference to another one. It looks like that might have been um, in the design stage. What we need is a uh, an engineer that could turn turn some and thread them. And for those of you not sure what I'm talking about, that is an off off centered chuck. That is threaded inch and a half six to fit on this pole wood but if i want to use it on a small one which i have done at times i just put a set of gripper jaws on and hold it around the outside so you can do that uh what have we got we got uh, three six we got nine different pre oh, come on. <laughs> just worked yourself on the tight 
okay that stops on there then but we've got nine different pre-drilled and pre-centered tap-ins on there and they're drilled three quarter 16 so that you can get a three quarter 16 which is the smallest chuck available smallest threaded one commercially available you can buy what i've got on there which is the three quarters of inch eight adapter uh, i think i've got i've got various ones but i can get i can do most sizes on there and i've only got the three sizes anyway um, or two sizes now so i've only got inch eight and inch and a half six and if I need to use the club one, I can take the back plate off of that chuck and put the metric one on, and then I can use it on our club lathe, our club weaver mac. So da Daniel's had to go. He has a meeting in a few minutes. Bye, right. Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. So that's what I was. That's the OCA off-centered. No. Off centered chuck. I don't know. I've got the paperwork for it, but uh, no one can find any more about it. It was made by Durrance. And I bought it through, I think, Wood Turning Magazine a good few many years ago, thinking that, oh, that'll be a good idea, which it has been. I've used it, I've demoed with it at Club. The only scary thing is if you get out too far, that goes round a bit like the donut chuck, but you haven't got any counterbalance on it. Whereas on the donut chuck, the wooden donut chuck that I, I used the other night, the other day, you can at least offset it with a block of hardwood screwed onto the back plate so you can you can balance it up so that it's relatively true running. But good idea. But... Uh, so if anyone can machine four inch aluminium and thread it down, it's even been balanced. Yeah, there are the, the other couple of options are one way uh, do a, it's a, a, an off center chuck and told you Robert Sorby, but they're exorbitantly expensive. Yeah, and um, Axminster to do one that fits on the sea jaws. You just swing this. Down a bit, Keith. Yeah, that's it. You can, you can swing that accordingly. Um, that's the Axminster one. Bloody expensive for what they are. This one, you can also adjust the back so you can step it round. Um, never use that. <laughs> <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Oh, we need one of those, but I won't use yeah. it. Uh, I think um, the Sorby one, if I remember right, you've got a hub that screws onto your headstock thread. You've got a big locking captive nut with a spin, um, a ball with an arm that takes another chuck if I, I think that's what it how it works so you take your chuck off the lathe and i wouldn't want to do it on a big one like this but if you take your chuck off you screw the wobble adapter whatever they want to call it onto the headstock and then the chuck goes on to the end and you can then swing that every orientation you like was one of the big turners decided that's what they wanted to do so they uh, developed this with either robert sorby or one of the big tool manufacturers but they're relatively easy to make if you've got access to and he's saying that's not the one he's got okay Clive Robertson's had to go. He's uh, he's away. Okay, Clive. Thanks for stopping by. So, there's lots out there. 
to that you can use um you're probably looking at close on a hundred pound for most of them personally i think that's rather expensive for what they are and for what you can use them for or the amount of use you're going to give them so that's why i made my own That's why I made my own donut chuck, which then doubles as a reverse in chuck to take off the the bottom. Shouldn't have head butted that camera just now. Yeah, Pete, Pete from Trusty Trees has a wobble chuck. He has the sorby. Yeah. yeah. Fits into the mill dovetail jaws. Oh, is that where it fits? Oh, so I've never... Never seen one. Yeah, has a calm and a peace split on it. Right, right. I swapped a set of carving tools to mine. I was given the carving tools. Oh, well, that sounds like that was quite a, that was a greenfield swap then, Andy. <laughs> I do things like that. But, uh, you got to do what you need to, haven't you, at the end of the day. Uh, Mostly used when I made loads of lamps, Pete is saying. Yeah, I should imagine it's quite good for things like that or candlesticks. Um, a bit of a gimmick, I believe, unless you that's all you're doing. Jennifer's off. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye, Jennifer. Hopefully see you uh, Thursday night. And in for tonight, I can't, who's on tonight, guys? Uh, Rich, isn't he? What day is this? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, I think Rich, Richard's on tonight. I'm not sure what he's doing, or I haven't heard that he's not on. I'm not sure if there's I can't remember. No, no, nor can I. That's the trouble with getting old, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, it is indeed. <laughs> yeah, you have to write things down. Yeah, we, we, we've got the excuse for it. But, uh, well, if the subscriber has uh, got notification bells on, we'll, we'll get a notification anyway. So. Yeah, whether you get it before or after it's finished is a different thing. But, uh, YouTube seems a little bit slow at the moment on uh, notifying people. It was today, I'll say. Um, yours was a little bit slow. Not. There we go. So, questions, and we're just we're just buying on two o'clock. Yeah. So that was a good hour. I can uh -huh. I can finish whenever because I shall uh, I should glue this lot in later on or tomorrow, and then wait for it to go off, and then. Uh, Billy put it ready for next week. Thanks, Alan. He, 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 really enjoyed that. Another club member he, going off. You um, can maybe put a picture of two up the gluing process, maybe. Just let people see how you glue it in. If I can work out how to get pictures off of the phone on to whatever, um, I could possibly do that. But I'm so technolog technologically advanced... <laughs> I've got a bloody clue. <laughs> Thanks, Gav. My uh, my guru's at uh, at work now for a few days, so I, I'm reluctant to uh, ring him and ask him. <laughs> it's whatever it is. You know, sometimes we uh, sometimes we can work it out. It's probably simple once you've been shown two or three times. Yeah, my, like I have my, seen it. Uh, yeah. my, uh, my son does all my technical work and uh, then you have to slow him down and uh, get him to go through it half a dozen times so you can Exactly, yeah. Thanks, Andy. An yeah. See, see you Thursday evening. Uh, yes, I've got a friend up the road oh. that comes, comes in and uh, helps me on the computer at times and... Uh, so what's in, the plan for, what's in the plan for Thursday? 
Right. I, I will say to him when he comes in, I've got this uh, got this problem. I say, what problem? I sorted that. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. <laughs> Thursday. Right. I'm going on to the little lathe. And I'm doing spindle problems, issues, turning. So basically what I'm going to be showing you is how to use various chisels, skew chisels and the like on spindles. But there won't be a lot of coves and beads because I don't, I'm just doing pens. And then at least I'm doing something that I can finish off rather than go in the bin. Good. I've got quite a few blanks glued up. So it's just a matter of swapping them over. So that's what I'm going to do on Thursday. Carry on from the um, bowl, bowl and um, bowl gouge turning that I did last Thursday. So so Pete's away. Pete, yeah. Pete's off, but he says thank you very much. Uh, see you Thursday, hopefully. Thanks, Pete. Cheers, mate, for stopping. And uh, yeah, just carry on like that and uh, see how it goes. Good, excellent. So we'll see part of this of this bowl on. See the, and the rest of this on next Tuesday. Good job. Well, that, a different crowd come in Tuesday lunchtime than what the what there is on a, a Thursday evening. But well, I, I have I have the I have the farrier coming to me on Thursday morning, so I can't do Thursday lunchtime at between sort of twelve and two. Yeah, but I might I might try and pop in about half two and do something. Okay, and that'll be that'll be a little bit of spindle work too. Okay. Yeah, well, just just put it out as, well, as best I. you can. Yeah, yeah, as best you can. Um, thanks, Steve Scott. There's still 29 in here. Listen, there there. waffling, waffling on. <laughs> Bloody ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, worse than women's hour, isn't it? So, uh, have any of you guys got any questions or any thoughts? Oh. Have I got to think up my questions and answer them myself? Colin from Richard uh, at Spinningwood. Thanks for your time, Keith and Brian. And Keith, will you please give my uh, give Scott my best wishes? Will do when I speak to him. Thanks, Richard. Hope you're enjoying your abrasive that uh, you got sent up, and you're finding uh, you can get a decent finish off of it now. Yeah, I sent I sent some up to him um, a couple of weeks ago. Well, he bought it, but I still sent it up to him. So if any of you guys in the chat are after abrasive, I sell Indasa abrasive, the Rhino. It's that one now, isn't it? Whether you can see it on there. Rhino grip. It's Velcro-backed, so it grips on. So use it as as a strip or cut it into squares and put it on the sanding pads and i can do one of each grit six grits posted to you for 14 pound so it's not expensive that's a meter of each if anyone's interested message that's not, me that's not bad at all no very no. good price Well, I have uh, I have an account with them, so whatever they give me. Thanks, Alan. Do you supply elephant <laughs> bog rolls? No, mate. Um, tool station, Alan. They do them in packs of six. They do white and blue, and they do two different sizes. They do the kitchen size. And they also do the workshop size. I think the kitchen size is about eight inch across and the workshop size is 12 inches across, I believe. Like we used to get at club. Or am I wrong? No. The ones we got at club were eight inches across. So they, they do a smaller one still then. But uh, the eight inch ones are the ones that we used to get. So if you need a code number, give us a shout. Or if you can't find, if not, look it up online. You can order it online and they do a click and collect. And you've got one just around the corner from you, I think. I expect Screwfix do it as well, but I 
I've not had a lot of, uh, not got a lot of faith in screw fact, screw fix. I'm afraid. Yeah, we're we're having some real difficulty over over in uh, Northern Ireland at the minute with trying to get stuff sent across. Um, screw fix have a couple of depots here, but they never seem to have anything in. Right? Have you got? Uh, have you not got tool stations? Yeah, okay, got no, tool station. No, no, no tool stations here either. No. Okay, Alan. Bye, Alan. No. Good. I'm glad you're in. Um, you think it's amazing, Richard. It's good stuff. It's what a lot of the pros use until they get conned into putting their name against something else. But you talk to some of the pros and they, I'm using it because I, I get it for free. Yeah, fine. <laughs> All the time you're getting it for free, it doesn't matter how, man, how many meters you use, does it? So, but when you've got to buy it and uh, yourself, I find, and well, I used to get, used to sell loads of it to club. Exactly the same stuff as what I'm now selling direct because club can't uh, get their act together to sell it. So, too many asking, and I said, "Yeah, okay, I'll do it then." So I've ordered a I've ordered a hundred meters of each. So if that's it, guys. Brian and I are going to say thank you very much. Love you and leave you. And go and have a nice cup of tea. Yeah, I will see you Thursday evening. Brian will see you when he uh, when he wakes up from the farrier. Um, don't know whether Brian can do next Tuesday after this one again. Yes, he can. Yeah, yeah I, I'll send you a link then, Brian. As soon I, as. I'm, re I'm retired, so I can <laughs> yeah, jump in and I know, basically. But, I'd rather ask and tell you. Yep. <laughs> so thank you, mate. Um, no, we have a bit of a laugh, and that's what it's Probably all about. Good, good. It's all good practice too. Yeah, thank um, you, Terry. Terry's off the looks of it. Hi, Terry. So I'm going to go and. So we're down, you. To, we're down to 23, and we've been going for 72 minutes. So. Yep, I'm going to hit the off button then. So. Thanks, everybody. I will see as many of you that can make it on uh, Thursday evening. And the rest of you I will see hopefully next Tuesday. Bye Thanks, to everyone. Brian. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, Steve Scott.